Example 46. This is our first example for 3D rigid body equilibrium. And on this one, we've got this green plate. It's going to be supported by a ball and socket support at A. We've got a roller at B. And then we've got a rope here at C that's attached. We want to find our reactions for the supports at A, B, and C. Now, I know my ball and socket here at A doesn't really look like a ball and socket, but believe me, those are kind of hard to draw in Corel Designer. So, so just take my word for it, this is going to be ball and socket. Okay, first thing we're going to do is draw the free body diagram. All right, so let's go ahead and draw this plate. So there's my plate, and let's put the axes here. Let's get Z, X, and then Y. And now let's label the forces. So we've got these two applied forces here. We've got 400 newtons, 300 newtons. Let's go ahead and draw those on here. That's two meters. That's two meters. And then over here, we got the 300. That's two meters, and that's one meter. All right, so now we know our distances, and we've got these two forces. Now we've got our supports. Let's start with the rope. We've got this rope. It's attached between C and then this point up here. Now, which way would the rope act? Do we want the rope pushing on this plate? No, because the rope can't push. It's not going to provide any sort of support. So we want it to pull, we want it to provide tension, so it's going to act away, and I'm going to call that TCD. Okay. So that'll be the force due to that rope, and then what else do we got? We got this roller. Now what does a roller do? A roller just basically allows something to sit on top of it, and it just supports it, keeps it from falling down further. All right, so this is basically just resting on top of the roller. Uh, you can still move the plate back and forth here. You could pull it up and down, or you can pull it up, I should say, um, if you wanted. And so let's see what force we should have. Now, we already said you can't push it down, right, because that roller's there. So the force that's supplied by the roller is going to be BZ. It's going up. Now our ball and socket. Remember what a ball and socket is. Think about this as we've got an attachment in here. We've got this outer sphere. There is a ball inside of here that's attached to the plate. And remember a ball and socket will allow rotation in all the directions, but it doesn't allow any translation. Okay, So I know that's hard to see in this picture, but no translation. So that means we're going to have our three forces. I'm going to have AY, I'm going to have AX, and then I'm going to have AZ. And I'm just assuming these positive directions because that's what I always do. I think it's easiest to assume positive directions. If we pick the wrong direction, we'll know in the end because we'll get a negative. Okay, so now we have this. We weren't given the mass or the weight of this plate, so we're just going to ignore the, the weight at this point. Let's go ahead and get our equilibrium equations. We're going to sum up the forces and then do the moments. Let's do the x components first. So remember, this is x in this problem. We've got ax. That's positive. And that's the only x component we've got, right? So this is going to be 0. Now let's look at the y component. This is the y-axis. How many forces do we have in that direction? We only have the y component due to the ball and socket. So a y is going to be 0. And then finally, the z direction. Everything's in the z direction. We've got 400, we've got 300, this TCD, we've got BZ, and then AZ. We've got five, five forces for this one. So positive BZ minus 400 plus TCD minus 300, and then plus AZ, that has to equal zero. 
Well, we can't solve for anything here. We got three unknowns. So you're just going to have to hang on to that equation, go back to it in a little bit. Now let's look at our moments. Now you need to figure out what point you want to use. And remember, you want to pick the point that has the most forces going through it, the most unknowns. So for this case, we don't really have one point that's better for doing that because we already know AX and AY, those are both zero. So we have one force at this point, one here, one here, one here, and one here. All right, so no point on this one is better than another. If you didn't know these two components and all three of these were unknown, you'd want to pick A for sure. I'm going to go ahead and pick A anyways, but you could pick this point or this point. You could pick any of the points and they're going to give you the, it's going to be the same. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to find the moment about A due to the 400 Newton force first. So that's for this force. I want the moment about this point. I'm going to use vectors to do this. I need a position vector that goes from here over to here. And that position vector is going to be 2i minus 3j. Right, because I'm going from here to here, so this is 2i. And then we got 1 plus 2, that's 3j. And that's going to the left, so it's negative. We're going to cross that with negative 400k. That gives me 1200i plus 800j. And that's going to be Newton meters. So we took care of this one. Now let's look at the tension. Still going to be about point A here. This one, our position vector is easier. We just want to go from A over to here. That's just going to be in the Y direction. It's going to be negative 3J. Cross it with TCBK. That gives you negative 3 TCBI. Next, let's look at the 300 Newton force. So here's the force, here's A. We need our position vector to go from A over to this point. That's negative 1J. We're going to cross that with a negative 300K, which gives us 300I. All right, got, let's see, one more of these. We need to look at BZ. Right here, we don't care about because we're already, AZ is going through point A. We don't have a moment there, but we do need to look at BZ. Oops, so this is a moment about A for BZ. Now our position vector needs to go from A over to B. That position vector is going to be 4I minus 3J. We're going to cross that with BZK. And that gives you negative 3BZI minus 4BZJ. So now we've got all of this, what do we want to do now? We need to find the sum of all that, right? So we're going to sum up the like components. So all of the I terms are going to go together, the J terms go together, and then we'll set that equal to zero. So let's group up the I terms. Gives us 1200 minus 3 TCD plus 300 minus 3 BZ. That's I. And then for J, we've got 800 and then minus 4 BZ J. That equals zero. Now remember, each one of these terms gives you an equation. So we get two equations out of this. Let's look at the I components. So we have the 1200 minus 3TCD plus 300 minus 3BZ. That's going to equal 0. And then for J, we've got 800 minus 4BZ equals 0.
Now look, this one only has one unknown. That's good. That means we can solve for Vz. Vz is then going to be 200 newtons. So let's box that because that's one of the answers we want. Now you're just going to kind of work your way back up. This equation, we have Vz and Tcd in it. Plug in the 200 for Bz, you can solve for Tcd. And what do we get for tension? We get 300. And then lastly, we're still missing one unknown. We need Az. So you're going to come way back up here. And then you'll plug in the 200, the 300, and then you can solve for Az. And let's write it up here. Az will be 200 newtons. So that gives you your five unknowns. And notice these are all positive, so we assume the correct direction when we drew our diagram. All right, so as long as you have these force values for your supports, that green plate will be supported and it won't have any rotation and it's not going to have any translation. All right, so I'll see y'all in the next video for another example.